Hey, welcome to Jimmy D's RC. It's been a while since I've been in the workshop. I've been flying a lot of airplanes lately. Got some feedback that I may need uh, a cameraman or to only do close passes because it's hard to see the airplanes in the videos. I appreciate that and I'm working on it. Uh, in the meantime, I have gone ahead and been lucky enough to acquire a top flight one fifth scale P51 Mustang. I believe this was the IRF kit. I don't exactly know a whole lot about the, uh, the history of uh, this airplane in general um, or in specifics because uh, I am the third owner. Uh, there's a lot of uh, work that has been very well done on this airplane. There are a few things that need buttoning up and uh, that's what these, this next series of videos is going to be about. Uh, so today what I'm going to try to tackle uh, is uh, under the front of the cowl. I'll bring the camera around in a moment uh, to show you what I'm, I'm going to be working on. I want to work a little bit under the cockpit and I have to attach and hinge the rudder as well as cover it. So uh, three bigger jobs that need doing and uh, we might get stuck into those in just a moment. Okay, so here we are. Uh, what I might do is take the camera and uh, show you close up what I'm talking about that needs doing. So over here, uh, you can see I've got for my Robart air retracts, I've got my air valve. Uh, before, all this was attached to was a thin layer of um, balsa like that. And what had happened is the balsa had all collapsed where whoever was uh, filling the, the air retracts went ahead and pushed, I guess, whatever um, uh, filling uh, device they used to fill it up. And also there was some area here uh, for the fuel overflow. Um, and there was another thing that was attached there. Ah, uh, yes, it was uh, the uh, red LED, which I've got right there. That was also in this area, and it was also a part of the whole collapsed kind of balsa area. So what I've gone ahead and done already, you can see I've, uh, I've taken some uh, oak dowel. I believe that's about quarter inch oak dowel, um, maybe even half inch by the looks of it. I'll have to measure it. Um, anyway, so I've taken some oak dowel and I've reinforced that. So that's, I mean, look how solid that is now compared to how it was. And then I've uh, just used some, uh, some light ply here, aviation ply, to uh, build a plate which I'm going to drill and um, pull these items through as well and then I'm going to recover that with a uh, balsa sheet and then of course uh, recover it with some monocoat or aura cover whatever I can get my hands on as we move down here you can see how really well uh, arranged all the cables are um, so a lot of time and energy and care was spent in making sure that it was well organized inside that uh, that area so I'm pretty happy with that can't complain at all uh, there's my UBEC the UBEC wasn't uh, really attached very firmly it's just attached to the bottom of the cockpit and you can see it's quite flimsy so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take more of this aviation ply and I'm just going to put a plate probably right across here quite up up quite high and then I'm going to have the UBEC attach to that and then we come around to the back of the airplane and you can see there's no rudder and there were old CA hinges now I don't even know if it was actually glued on both sides with those old CA hinges um, I got a lot of feedback about old CA hinges or those CA hinges being okay but after a while they wear out and break and when you're talking about a one-fifth scale model uh, with a 55 cc engine up the front that can be quite a dangerous proposition if you get things wrong. So what I've decided to do is to re-hinge that, and I'm going to be using these. Those are the Robart uh, 3 16 inch um, pin hinge. I'm gonna be using those for that. So uh, quite a little bit of work ahead of me. So I've got a bit of work to do, and I think it's time to get stuck into it.
two pieces. Okay, so that camera is packed it in. Uh, you can probably tell that it's been a while since I've been in the workshop. My work isn't exactly up to the same standard as it normally is. I couldn't decide whether to use a freaking saw or a exacto knife or whatever. Anyway, so, uh, but uh, you know, I mean, not, with all these things, we're not professionals. We're just uh, here having fun, enjoying the hobby. And I'm not showing you the only way to do a thing. I'm showing you the way that I've done it. So uh, yeah, let's uh, continue with this repair.
All right. Well, so uh, that'll do for today. Clearly, I've got to sand it down. I'm probably going to leave this quite quite large back here, um, quite thick, and get that very very lightly sanded, just to surface sand. And then, of course, I'm going to have to feather it in because there is a bit of a gap between the old. Uh, balsa uh, covering skinning and the new stuff. So this is a bit thicker, more robust, which is great. I mean, I can, I can, I mean, look at the push on that like crazy, and nothing's, nothing's going to happen. So we're not going to have a repeat of the the damage that was done um, to the uh, the skin with that. But uh, look, overall, pretty happy. Uh, I feel a bit rusty. It's not my best work, uh, but it'll definitely get the job done. Uh, once I recover it. It's definitely not to, you know, some of the scale modelers that you see on YouTube, not up to their standard. I, I didn't exactly get this uh, straight in a straight line. I probably have to come up with a new technique for that. But uh, overall, um, it'll do the job. It'll, uh, it'll be quite happy. It's under the air, airplane and half of it's under the cowl anyway, so you won't even bloody well notice. So very happy with, uh, with how it's turning out. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up uh, on a future video where we'll continue working on the P-51. All the best.